In this video, I'll be introducing well orders and order isomorphisms and explaining the connection between ordinals and well orders. So first of all, what is a well order? Well, a well order is basically what we discussed last time, but a little, little less general. What it says is that a, an ordered set S with an order less than is well ordered if for every subset of S that is non-empty, there exists an element X of that subset such that for every other element in that set, um, they are greater than or equal to that chosen element. Basically meaning, for every non-empty subset, there is a minimal element. And that minimal element is in the set. And that is what we discussed last time. This is obviously true for ordinals. Be All right, so the next definition, and this one's also pretty important, is order isomorphism. This is like isomorphisms in algebra and homeomorphisms in topology. And it's just extending this to orders. So it's a structure preserving map. And I think you can already tell what the structure preserving thing will be, but let's define it anyway. So an order isomorphism is a map F that takes you between two ordered sets. I'll say S under less than and S prime under less than prime. And it has the property that it's bijective, so I'll just write a little tilde over it, and also that it is order preserving. So if x is less than y, that is equivalent to saying that f of x is less than f of y. So that's a pretty basic definition. Now, an important object that we'll be dealing with a lot is something called a segment. If I have some ordered set S and I pick an element X from it, then I can create what is known as the segment SX, which is the set for A an element of S such that A is less than X. That's that simple. Now these are actually really important when analyzing um, well-ordered sets and just ordered sets in general, especially under order isomorphisms. Now the reason why these are important to analyze under order or isomorphisms are because of these two properties that you should remember, that if I have SY as a segment of S and I do the segment of this to X, this is just the segment on x, and this is for x less than y. So segments can combine like that. And the other important property is that if I have an order isomorphism f, and I apply it to some segment sx, so uh, it, I'm going to be assuming this is from s to s prime, then this is going to be equal to s prime at f of x. So this is for any order isomorphism. That's act, uh, these are the two reasons why segments are important. And now there are two other properties I'd like to discuss. And it's that if I have ordinals, some of their properties when it comes to this. If I have alpha less than beta, then beta segmented to alpha is just alpha that simple. And second property is that if alpha is order isomorphic, which I usually just write that, which means congruent, if alpha is order isomorphic to beta, that means that alpha is equal to beta, and that's for ordinals. All right, so the theorem that we're going to try to prove now is going to be that every well-ordered set is order isomorphic to some ordinal. And this is the connection I was talking about. Every single well-ordered set that you could possibly pick 
is order isomorphic to some ordinal. Now, first of all, I'm going to prove a lemma that will make this super easy. And this lemma basically says is that if I'm given an ordered set S less than, uh, if for every X an element of S, I have it that SX is order isomorphic to some ordinal. So every segment is order isomorphic to some ordinal. That means that S itself is order isomorphic to some ordinal. So every sing if every segment is order isomorphic to an ordinal, then the entire thing is order isomorphic to some ordinal. Now the way this works is that if I have a, let's say fx, so f index x is going to be the map from the segment on x into some ordinal I'll call f of x. This is the order isomorphism that's guaranteed by the hypothesis, because it is the order isomorphism from the segment to an ordinal guaranteed by the hypothesis. Then what I'll do is define a map f, which is basically just taking you from x to this f of x ordinal. f takes you from the entire space s, into some ordinal I'll call alpha, which is the set of f of x for x and s. It's basically the image of s under this. That's just to guarantee it's bijective. And then of course you could probably guess that x gets sent to f of x, the ordinal right there. The proof that that's an ordinal is left to you because it's, it's really not that hard. All it really uses are these two facts. But right now I'm going to use these two facts right here to create a diagram. And this diagram basically says that if I have x less than y, then I can create this diagram where I have sx, which is simply equal to sy restricted to x. And then I can take the map fx to f of x. That's the definition, sx to f of x. And then for this one, I'll take fy, except I'll restrict it to sx, just so that this is a bijection. And I'll t send it to, well, let's use this fact right here. Instead of putting down fy of sy to x, Let's think about this. Instead of writing it like that, let's write it as the image of this map is going to be f of y. So let's first put down f of y. And then I'll restrict it to fy apply to x because that's what I'm doing here. I'm just applying fy to x on that lower indice. That's what this says. And then I can create the map right here pretty easily by doing fx inverse and then doing fy restricted to sx. So right there I'll just call it phi and phi is fy restricted to sx composed fx inverse. Now this is an order isomorphism because it's the composition of two order isomorphic maps. And just so you know, inverses of order isomorphic maps are trivially going to be order isomorphic maps. And then the composition, same thing. It's pretty trivial that it's going to be order isomorphic. So phi is an order isomorphism that brings you from f of x, which remember is an ordinal, into f of y restricted to f y of x which is also an ordinal. And so what this tells you, by this fact right here, order isomorphisms is just a quality, is that f of x is simply going to be f of y restricted to f y of x, which tells you then that f of x is a proper subset of f of y which tells you, because these are ordinals, 
by ordinal properties that I proved last time, that means that f of x is less than f of y, basically telling us if x is less than y, then f of x is less than f of y. It's an order isomorphism. Now the thing is, is that it also has to be bijective, but that's pretty obvious from these two facts, because this is just the range of it, and by the fact that they're not equal to each other by this fact, these two things are not equal to each other for the same inputs. That means that it's also injective, meaning this is a bijection. And so the way we prove the first theorem is just by doing some basic manipulation here. What I do is I take the set E equal to the set of A, an element of S, where S is our set, so A is an element of S such that SA is not order isomorphic to some ordinal. So there's no ordinal that it's order isomorphic to. Then I'll take A equal to the minimum of E due to the fact that S is well ordered. And then that tells me by the fact that this is the minimum such value such that it's not order isomorphic to alpha, to some ordinal, that tells me that for any x less than a, by the fact it's a minimum, sx is order isomorphic to some ordinal. I'm just using the shorthand right here. And now remember that sx is equal to sax, telling me that by lemma 2, that because every single, every single segment of SA is order isomorphic to some ordinal, that tells me that SA is order isomorphic to some ordinal, which tells me that that's a contradiction. So that means that E must be empty. So there must be no segment that is an order isomorphic to some ordinal which tells me every segment must be order isomorphic to an ordinal, which tells me by lemma 2 that S is order isomorphic to some ordinal. And that's that, that's a wrap. Ordinals are our way of studying well-ordered sets, and segments are our way of studying order isomorphisms. Just keep that in mind for the future. And that's it. My moods live on that swing sim. Push me harder, push me, push me swing into tomorrow.